We should keep a lookout for these pieces. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. If you wear those pieces, it will help me protect your mortal coil. Why does my mortal coil help? Maybe he was just wearing these bits and then there was... Yes, bullets will fly. They always do. And the coil is fleshy and mush and permeable. Cast it in ceramic shell. Resist death. Understood. The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form. Ageless and synthetic. It is. It's expensive. Their janitor is a line in consideration of ceramic. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. The chain baby. By catching, do you mean let's not log them as evidence? Let's steal them? No, let's not. Of course. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form, ageless and synthetic. Maybe we don't pull them off. Yet. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. That's not his heart's over there. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked Alcohol by? Alcohol and heartbreak. Your fist clenches suddenly. We'll be riddled with this guy. Decay is creeping on the tattoo. Already, most of the canvas that's holding it has darkened. Now, it disintegrates slowly, letting out a stink. This is a map of the nice. A map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. I've seen something. <laughs> A sudden ringing sound filled the air. Lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Well, it didn't work. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. He produces two metal cap poles and clicks them into place on the side of the apertures and a thin slot shines there I have only two ampoules so Ampoops. nobody move I don't want to waste one points the camera at the corpse peering into it the lens needs adjusting then a, sound, a shrill flash followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass you see streams of color pour onto the thick glossy piece of paper rolling out cool. in case we need it Cool machine. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter to us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Can I have it? I should look at it later without the corpse smell. Sure, just don't lose it. Change the piece of rolled up. Photo paper. It's no larger than a pack of cigarettes. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by, 
his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. In the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just sub-aquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Tell me, who are you, dead man? I'm gone. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. There's nothing funny about you. You are... Yeah, no, you alive. A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Takes one to know one. Go ahead, Kobo. Into the wild pale yonder. In the past. Way out west. Uh, damn. I get the damn compartment in my ledger open. The blue heart. Oh, that's good shit. Just press down and fuck it open like you always do. Fuck it hard, Kopopo the clown. He means force. It'll work. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your black frothy liquid starts bubbling. Imagine that. Yeah, man! Don't be crazy! Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you! Your wild imagination is doing this! Ask some more of those questions you love so much! He loves those. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copper rooney. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Oh, good. Your loss, Copper Dopo, would have because Me. you're a coming right up, Copper Rooney Rooney. This is fuck no. You're no Rooney. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. I feel like I've been getting a lot of Harry lately. You might be onto something there. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something too? Because. Me? You have he killed you. Loved it me in, brother Kopo. It was love all along. And you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face. Motionless. Looking into my eye. Standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Because maybe this will lead to something, something indestructible, unforeseen, miraculous. <laughs> Hands, lips on the corpse, appear to smile, the face rotates before you slowly. Something is on its way, something hidden. It's coming, a miracle from the northwest, and it's almost here. You can feel it in the air, on your hands. The cold spring air smoothing them over. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. So how do we... Of course, you have... Do I remind you of someone? Sure I do. You... Do I rem... You sure... Do I... No, not quite. Sure I do. Come back later, Coppo. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent... Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. 
his fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters. Oh, I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. There's no question. There's, uh, there's like only cutting. cutting. How hard can it be? How hard can it be? Have someone else do it. I can cut the belt easily. And I already have the chain cutters. You saw the branch. Um... I don't doubt your physical prowess, officer. But that's aircraft strength material. And we do not have a secure platform to perform the procedure on. The risk of acrobatic failure is one we cannot take. We must not become comedy for the locals. The fuck have you got against comedy pigs? Climb up there and saw the branch? There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appeared to be suspect in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. Confirmed. It's unsafe. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt, like chicken on a skewer. Someone else? You mean like the police? Sadly, yes. The whole RCM is out there right now, doing the exact same thing we are. Are we in a rush to help them? Not with this on our hands. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down, fast. Yeah! Bang bang time, pig! Shoot his- How? It absolutely will not, officer. That's not how physics work. It will maybe cut one thread loose. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the crew. They'll miss. The pigs will miss, you know. Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks. He then steps back and assumes the fellow's stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. He's gonna fucking miss! The chief's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air. God damn it. Oh my god. That was so many types of wrong. Who taught Four Eyes to shoot? Whip up a grueling training regimen for him right now. Beat the man. He feels bad about it. About his eyes mostly. Just having bad eyesight. Probably from a young age. Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno is not fucking handicapped, is he? Kuno study too. Kuno. The lieutenant doesn't say a word, just looks at the gun. I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down with. Take his gun and show him how to use it. It's bad as it is, us shooting. I only have. Oops. This is the sorriest. Officer. Why do we only have one gun?
That is even more unfortunate than the badge. You need to contact your station about it as soon as possible. Try not to lose this one, please. Take it, you fucking banani poika! Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth! The cold piece of bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth! Kuno is silent. Aggression gathers in the air. The trigger feels delicate and ready to break under your finger. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand supporting your gun arm. You just shoot yourself in your f mouth. At least you won't miss. Or what? You gonna fuck me? You wanna fuck me, pig? You do it! Set me free! You feel as though it would be dangerous to set this creature free to roam about the cosmos. Don't. Do it! Where's your legendary? Jeez. Put it right here, Mulka! Right here! Intense shit, Coffer! Fuck it waved his gun! It wasn't intense, it was pathetic! Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, slick, with the falling rain. The corpse slowly rotates. Look, he's crying. You gonna cry now, fucking faggoty? The lieutenant takes the gun carefully from you and holsters it. Fucking pussy didn't shoot shit, did he? Didn't shoot me, didn't Didn't shoot me. There is sincere disappointment on her face. This kid was expecting pandemonium and release from her mortal coil. We need to access the harbor and ask the leader of the Union to have it taken down. They have the tools and they have men. I did not want us to be indebted to Evra Claire. I wanted us to be able to deal with it ourselves. That is clearly not the case. We need help. You need to suck my dick! Am I still alive? The leader of the Union. A dangerous and corrupt man. One you don't want to be indebted to. Okay. An intricate web of blue lines stretch. It still kind of looks like a map of the stars in the night sky. For you to discover. You've gotten as far as you will without assistance. Gone. Level up. Good point shivers. Why not? Okay, so we gotta <clears throat> go find the union leader and talk to him about the body. We're kind of stuck there. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. Looking up at the sky, cold water dripping from your hair. Grey sky like great battleships, clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. Your shirt sticks to your chest. The shoulders of your disco blazer grow heavy. The cold finds its way in under your skin. You shiver, and the city shivers with you. Hmm, so that's to the south. A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. Uh, 
what's on the other side. The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. Jamrock. Rivershol is the capital of the world. Jamrock is the capital of Rivershol. Droplets form on your eyelashes. It's home. Home. So I gotta go south to get back home in the capital of the capital. Come back screen. Is back. Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? Why am I not there? Where do I live? I have a brother in the cut. Where the hood at? I have a brother in the cut. Where the word at? Why am I not there? To be in Martinez, where no one goes, at the runoff point of a long forgotten canal in the whitest part of town in the shadow of the day the revolution failed what am i doing here standing in the rain looking north where jamrock rock city stretches inland where do i live on a street there that flows like a muddy river in the snow with fire traps rising on either side a film rental opens its doors to the rain an armored motor carriage rushes past the corner where you used to walk together. Suddenly, the hair on your back rises. You cannot return. In the rain-swept distance, above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill oh. stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. Satellite officer Jean Vichmer rushes down the precinct stairs, umbrella in hand. It's unopened. He doesn't seem pleased about the spring rain. On the bridge, officers Torson and McLean are standing guard. Torson wears jeans and a fishnet wife beater. Satellite officer Vichmer passes by, and the young man remarks to him, Where's your homo, homie? What? It's not like that. They're what is called heterosexual life partners. They have a battle-tested relationship. A, a blood bond, if you will. Huh? Yeah. It was his umbrella, but the wind immediately turns it inside out. Hetero. Sexual. Life. Partners. Fanny Avery. Male-centric workplace you Have you seen him? Is there something wrong? No, nothing. It's just... Judith went to his place and found the Monday Mail unopened. I think he's still there. You didn't, like, drink with him over the weekend, did you? That would be irresponsible. With that animal? Never again, man. What, is he still down there? In, you know, south of the interchange? The... what was it? In Martinez. He's in Martinez. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes, making you look up and blink. What's the bug? Coalition hero statics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. Sheets of rain over the water, a flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez, with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol. Ghosts rise into the sky. Where are you, ghosts? The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district, 
Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. Will you ever go there? Uh -huh. No, you are just one of the hundreds of thousands who watch them rise across the bay from Martinez every day. What is down the shore? Urban coastline, rain dripping off etonite covered roofs, cinder blocks left over from half finished construction, a defunct research and development building once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. Beyond that? Coal City, end of all lines. Run your fingers through your dampened air. What is to the north? Tower blocks crowd one another. 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war torn stone walls. Hallways collapse from the mortar hits of a war that was lost long ago. Clothes lines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. A yard. Rain falls onto the roof of a woodshed. Coal leaks into a puddle beneath a dead man's feet. He swings from a tree, bloated. Droplets of rain slip from his cold cheeks. What's in the east? The great gates of the industrial harbour are locked. A chill runs down your back. You shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. Behind the gates, heaps of supply crates, red and blue metal shipping containers, slick with rain. The Greater Revachol Industrial Harbour is an artificial mountain range. Immense wealth resides within, and immeasurable poverty in its shadow. Beyond that? La Dussienne, King Dries Passenger Harbour. Cruise ships flanked by dock arms. Cranes watching over the mouth of the river distributary. What's across the distributary? Kudon, the lower middle class. Distributary after distributary cuts the city blocks in half. Seven story buildings trail off into the rain. What is beyond Kuron? A silvery curtain of rain over the houses. The class divide. Motherfucker. This rain will not let up anytime soon. You should get a raincoat. There's a freight to the east. They sell them there. Good to the east. Ancient fountain that doesn't pump water anymore, there's a tree in it. Tire tracks leading onto the roof. Slush and rain has almost washed them off. So in here. There's some guys up ahead. Where's pawn shop? Fast cash for faster times. Fingerless gloves. Bottle out of order. Hello. Good day to you, officers. A burly man hangs out by the waterlock, carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the waterlock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. His posture is relaxed. Despite his powerful build and a knife in his hand, this man resorts to physical intimidation only infrequently, if at all. Do you not cause this wreckage? I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, Plenty of daredevil drivers in Rivershell. The words daredevil driver sound ominous to you. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here, especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. 
you know what's further down the coast? Well, there's the fishing village, an abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. Yeah, not really much else. Just bombed out ruins. Can I have some salami? Sure thing. Want some too, officer? Why not? Bye. Let's put on some cool fingerless gloves. Gasoline stained fingerless gloves and navy blue. They've been worn threadbare, but being made of wool, they still provide some warmth and comfort. Figure stained fingertips. Fingerless gloves. Can I... A couple of indicator lights are missing from this control panel. Loose wires dangle from the now vacant holes. In the middle is a lever. Beneath it, a small metal plaque. This panel usually closes the water lock, turning it into a bridge that lets you cross the canal. But there's a crashed Samaran butter sign in the way. Pulling the lever probably won't do anything. Cool. 